Go ahead. Herself, 
she has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. For the fine linen represents, watch, the good deeds of God's holy people. For the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. Amen, Pastor. Amen. And the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, these are true words that come from God. Revelations 19, verse 6 through 9. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for the Word of God. We thank you this evening for this time to come and study your Word. And Lord, we ask you, Lord God, give us revelation, give us insight. Father, don't let this word just go in one ear and out the other. We bind the spirit of distraction tonight, of any, any hindrance tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray tonight you bless and honor your word tonight. Bless me to your service, God, tonight. Father, in, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So he's talking here about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed are they who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Tonight we're going to talk about... Amen. We're going to talk about this. We're going to, I want to take you to John chapter 14 in just a minute. But we're going to talk about tonight the subject of excuses. Amen. Because God's will is that every, every one of us go to heaven tonight. Amen. God's will is that every one of us go to heaven tonight. But even though, so, even though that's his will, we might have a couple stragglers in here who may not make heaven their home. Ain't that sad? That's sad. I mean, how, who do you want to pick? Two, let's pick two tonight. Who do you want to pick that ain't going? Do you want to be the one to volunteer? No. Uh -uh. But what if it was you? What if it was you that did not make heaven your home? And maybe some of you have been serving the Lord for, for several years now, and you didn't go to heaven. What a, what a, what a tragedy, you know? I mean, that'd be, that'd be heavy duty. And so we're gonna, hopefully we can read or talk about some stuff tonight that will keep you in line, keep you in, on track, keep you, you know, you know how they, you know how, 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 have you ever seen the way they herd cattle and they, and they bring them like in, a, in rodeos and different stuff and they channel them in the fences until they're just the one cow or one, one bull and they take them, they load them into the trucks or they put them in the chutes for the rodeos or whatever, but they, they how would you say, corral them? I mean, no, some of you need to be corralled tonight. Yeah. You're a little yeah. too loose. Yeah. A little too wild. Yeah. Amen. And you need, you see, the thing is, you need your pastors. Yeah. Whether you might, you know, the devil's whispering in your ear, I don't need anybody telling me what to do. Blah, 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 whatever. You need us. You really do. Yeah. We're going to keep you in mind. We're going to try to anyway. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I was watching the rodeo just the other night on the TV, and they had this one that was like 70 and 2. In other words, 70 times he threw his rider off and only two times did he ever did he get ridden to the eight seconds. That's a pretty good, uh, 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 you know what I mean, uh, how would you say, record for that cow, for the bull, right? 70 times versus two, that's pretty good, amen? But this one, when, it, when his rider got on him, he was hitting his head and hitting the rider into the fence so the rider had to get off and he couldn't ride the rodeo, he couldn't ride the bull because the bull was just too crazy for him and stuff. And sometimes we get some people like that here at New Hope. I don't know if any of the other pastors may be watching or something, you get people like that, but in Pueblo we have just a couple though. I, I know none of them are here tonight, right? But, but they're the ones that are just uncontrollable. You can't, you can't teach them, they're unteachable. They wanna buck you and fight you and kick you. You know what I mean? And you're trying to help them. You know what I mean? And so sometimes we do get a few stragglers through here, and, and the, but I don't think they're here tonight. I don't see them. Amen. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. But no more excuses, amen? Uh, okay, I already showed you the song. I have the song right there. But let me tell you first of all what an excuse is tonight. An excuse, the def definition of an excuse is a request to release someone from a duty or a requirement. A request to release someone 
from a duty or requirement. How many of you know that there's some things in your Christian walk that it's just, it's kind of like you're, 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 you're required to do it, your, your duty is to do it. It's not like a suggestion. You with me? It's not like, you know, going to church is not a suggestion. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, dude, if you get time, sister, if you get time, you know, come on down, we'll be here. You know we'll be here. Hmm? <laughs> right? Or, or, or a prayer. You know what I mean? It's it's not like a suggestion, and, and, and you know if you you know because we all get tired. And if you're just not if you're not tired and you're just kind of bored, then come on down to prayer. Yeah. We'll be here, huh? Or how about prayer? How about prayer? You know your personal prayer. How I many know that's that's not something that's a suggestion. You've got to pray if you're going to make it in this last day. Listen to MC Hammer. You got to pray, pray. Just to make it today. Remember that? I dare somebody go go Google that and look it up on the thing. But listen to the words that he's saying. It's a pretty cool song that he says. You watch a video, you can see him uh, uh, out witnessing and some of the stuff that happens in, in in the world with drugs and different stuff. I was watching it the other day. It's, it's kind of cool. But prayer is not a request. Prayer, I mean, it's not a suggestion. It's something that is required of you. And God requires you to pray. Amen? Reading your Bible, amen, that's not a suggestion. You with me? Because if you look around, not too many of us miss very many meals. Yeah. Right. How many of you think we can use a few less meals? Yeah. Because and, and your clothes are getting a little tight. Right. Or, yeah. no, not you guys? Yeah. Okay. How I many got some clothes, you know, that are a certain size and a little bigger size and then your biggest size? And you kind of fluctuate between those, like, no. Everybody's getting mad. Uh, an excuse, back to an excuse. It's a request for uh, to release someone from a duty or, re or a requirement. Some of the synonyms of the word excuse was to release exempt, absolve, or free. And I put in parentheses from an obligation. Do you guys realize that we're obligated to God for all He's done for us? To, to, to serve Him with all we have and all our life. You know what, guys? You're not obligated to your bosses. So many of you treat your bosses like, you, like you're obligated and your life is to be lived for them and for their will and their purpose. And I'm telling you tonight, that's not the truth. The truth is that if you're saved tonight, you're obligated to the Lord to live for Him and His will and His kingdom and not your own. It also means this. Excuse also means a reason or, ex or an explanation put forward to defend or justify a fault or an offense. Let me read it again. A, a reason or an explanation. How many of you, well, see, what, what, what happened was, all it is is an excuse. All you are is trying to justify your wrong. Yeah. It's a reason or explanation put forward to defend or justify. I could put oneself in there in a fault or offense. Turn to Luke chapter 14, verse 15 through 24. We're going to read a, a, a parable that Jesus was teaching uh, his disciples. Luke 14, 15 through 24. We want to welcome all those that are watching us on YouTube tonight. Tonight is Thursday, September, is it 15th? Yes. 2016. You're in our PM service, amen, and we're glad you tuned in. We're going to Luke chapter 14, verse 15 through 25. And it's the story of the, of the dinner party 
And I'm going to be reading out of the message translation or message paraphrase or whatever it is because it just sounded better and it kind of emphasizes on some stuff I wanted it to. But the title was The Story of the Dinner Party. And I put in parentheses, remember we, what we just opened in reading? Revelations 19? I put in parentheses, it sounds a lot like the marriage supper of the Lamb. Verse, four, verse 15. This triggered a response from one of the guests. How fortunate, he said, the one who gets to eat dinner in God's kingdom. I don't have it up because I was going to try and put it up the other day. It was too heavy and it, it almost fell. Uh, but remember I had the marriage supper of the Lamb over here? Yeah. The big picture that we have, I need to put it back up. But but uh, that's that's what he's talking about. He said, you know, how fortunate is somebody that gets to eat there. How many of you ever went out to a real expensive place to eat? This, this, this summer, my, my brother took me on a boat, a yacht. It wasn't a boat, it was a yacht. And he celebrated my 50th birthday. It was his birthday, and he, he put it for me, though. And we went out on this yacht, man, and it looked like, to me, the Titanic. Remember when they went to eat black, and he had a tuxedo, all, and he was all shiny, and, and, and they went in there to eat, and he, he escorted her in. Remember? Or am I, am I, you guys here tonight or not? Yes, yes. Remember uh, uh, Titanic, and they went in there, and they were, he didn't even know what to eat. Or how to, sometimes I go in, I don't know what fork goes where, or what you do, or, you know what I mean? China, you know what I mean? You, you, can, you can drink all that, uh, you know, all that stuff. And, 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 and man, this, this cruise that we went on was like that. It was all set up, man. And, and I was like, wow, I was blown away, because they had the most extravagant food and stuff. I didn't know how to act, you know? But I could imagine, I was so surprised, but I could imagine getting to sit in the marriage supper of the Lamb of the Lord, getting to sit in something so elegant, with Jesus, man. Jesus there with his apron on, he says, kiss the cook. And he's serving you. He said, he's serving you and asking you, hey, what do you want to drink? What do you mean? You know what I mean? And it's just amazing. And this guy said, man, whoever gets to get into that is fortunate, man. Blessed. You with me? Happy. You know, to be envied is the one that gets to sit in the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the truth is the invitation is to every one of us including our family members. Amen. You know, I was thinking of some of your family members when that song was on. Did you hear them in there? Did you hear them being mentioned? Yeah. Huh? I can't sit around the crowds, but at the line they're fine. Yeah. Huh? And I can't do this, and I can't do that, and the preacher preaches too long, and, but they'll sit and drink and get high and everything else for four hours you know, without even getting up to go to the bathroom. Hmm? Or whatever it is, you know what I mean? And, and uh, did you, uh, uh, the, the song's called Excuses. You can Google it, or you can go on YouTube, put excuses in there, it's by the kingdom, I think it's called, and play it for them. Say, hey babe, I wanted to show you a song. Pastor showed us a song, and, and he dedicated it to you. No, not really, don't, don't tell them that, because they know not like me for sure. Amen. Um, let's see. How fortunate are the ones who go, who gets to eat in the dinner in God's kingdom? And Jesus followed up. Yes, for the for the for there was once a man who threw a great dinner. And I, you know, he's talking about God. There was a man who threw a. Jesus liked to use stories, though. He threw this great party, right? And he invited many, many people. How many of you know the Bible says that many are called, and the word called means invited. Amen. Many are called. He said, but few are chosen. You with me? Yeah. Everybody is in, invited to come. And, and I know tonight, you know, I might, I might be preaching to the choir, you know what I mean? But, but, but I want you to understand that your family needs to get saved. Because right. as much as you love them, you don't want him to die and go to hell. You with me? You want him to be with you. You want him to get saved. And some of you have already, you've, you've grown immune to their excuses. Amen? 
You say, oh yeah, well that, they just couldn't come. They just didn't want it. You know, they weren't feeling too good. So now you're lying for them. You bought into the lie instead of telling them, oh, you know what? I'm going to play you a song, Pastor Rob. Huh? Amen. He invited many. It says, and when it was time for dinner, he sent out his servants to the, invi to invi to the invited guests saying, come on in. The food's on the table. Then they, then they all began to beg off. And that's what it literally means in the Greek, to beg off. They all began to beg off one after another, making excuses. The first said, I, I, bought, a piece of, I bought a piece of property and I need to look, look it over. Send my regards. Amen? He bought a piece. How many of you ever watch House Hunters or, or flip this house? Or and, and me and my wife always watching them shows because we love this. You know, that, that's, that inspires me. I already got an idea for the kitchen. I'm going to knock some walls and extend it and all this. Like, watching that, I should have watched that too much. I mean, and we have a three, four story church, you know, taking the whole block and everything else. But on one of them, there's this guy named, I don't know if you guys watch it. Did any of you watch any of that? There's this guy named Tarek and his wife, a blonde. And they buy a lot of houses. And he said, and in his opening statement, he says, we buy houses, the worst ones on the block. You know what I mean? And he says, sometimes we buy them so cheap, but they're sight unseen. And the only way you're ever going to get a dude, you know, what I was thinking when I seen this, I was thinking of him. And I was thinking, wow, it must be a cheap piece of property. Because, it, you know what I mean, if it's sold, if you're going to buy it unseen, then you're going to be buying it for the best possible price you can to get you the greatest value. So who would go, I mean, would any of you go buy land that you haven't seen? As a matter of fact, Jerry, that day we were, we were hearing your brother-in-law, they were texturing the thing. He came and, and uh, he was on his way to go survey some land. Somebody had bought him from out of state or something. And he was going to go survey it for them. With, you know, I mean, in other words, he was going to be somebody's eyes for this individual that ain't here. He's going to come and say, hey, this is prime property, dude. Buy it. It's worth it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You're not going to just buy a property you don't see. You're going to buy something that you know is, is, is it, it, it costs a lot less than what you need, than what its value is. You want to try and get a good deal, but cheap property you just buy it because it's cheap and you're going to make some money on it anyway. So these are, I mean, and I thought, who would buy property without visualizing it, without seeing pictures or knowing anything about it? Nobody really would unless you're buying it so cheap, you can't lose. You know what I mean? And, and, and so this individual, God invited him. Remember the king, remember the, it was the invitation was to the supper of the Lamb. It was to a great banquet that God himself was throwing. So, you know what I mean, when Jesus is teaching about it, I believe he's teaching of the marriage supper of the Lamb, which we're all invited to go to. Amen? Amen. And, 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 but the thing is, is that, you know what I mean, I, I, the only way I can reckon this, I can understand this, or parallel this, is church. It's the way church is, and, and pastor goes, and or Pastor Susan, or whatever minister they are, they go and they prepare. You know, a cook has to prepare. You don't just get up there and do stuff. You have to prepare. You have to go shopping. You have to do all this stuff. Pastors the same way. Who was it last night we were, we were watching with the men, and, and I think it was a guy talking, and he says, I wish I could just work two, two days a week, two hours a day. You know what I mean? Like the pastors do and stuff. And he was laughing because he was teaching on the armor bearers. And how God needs armor bearers and people around his life and different stuff like that. But many people have that mindset. They don't do nothing. They just do ask for our money. You with me? Yeah. Why are you so quiet? Is that you? Yeah. Huh? Amen. And I don't know why I was even going there. Amen. But, but God, he, 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 he's, or, or like the church, making and, and preparing and getting notes and getting songs and doing all these things and getting everything ready. And then, you know, hey, it's 7 o'clock on Thursday. And it's like, you know, a couple of faithful ones there. You know what I mean? I was watching one of our services just a few 
weeks ago and I looked and I'm teaching and I'm teaching and there was maybe one here and a couple over here and, and, and they only had the iPad there and I'm like, Naomi, I don't like the iPad way back there. And she said, why? I said, well, one, it's too far. Two, you can see all the empty seats. Move the iPad over here to where they just see me. So when they left, they're just thinking, they're hearing the preaching, they're doing all this. Man, he's, you know, he must have a great big old church. Huh? Yeah. But sometimes you prepare and you do all, and that's the only way I can parallel it. The way, where, 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 where I, the way I see it is that I prepare and I do all this stuff, you know what I mean, for a great feast. Yeah. And four or five people show up. Right. And, and the rest, what do they have? Excuses, excuses, we hear them every day. He sings better than I do, so we might play it again. Amen? But, but whatever excuses, whatever, remember, remember it's, it's, it's something that we're supposed to be doing, it's, but we're, we're, we're pushing it off, we're making excuses, we're, we're, we're you know, trying to justify ourselves of, of why we're not doing what we know we should be doing. Remember, God's making a banquet here, and, and He's invited all these people. And, and I, you know, it's hard to say this, but, but you're not guaranteed your ticket, man. Yeah. You, this ain't like you hear people say, uh, once saved, always saved. In other words, one day you came to an altar, accepted the Lord. So from there till 40 years later, when Jesus comes back, you've drank, drank and smoked and been with so many people and, and cheated and lied on your taxes and robbed and done all this stuff, but one day you said a prayer and so God's going to overlook all them 40 years of sin because one day you said a prayer. It just don't work that way. I wish it did. Yeah. Well, not really, but I mean, you know, it'd be easier. Huh? It doesn't work that way. Yeah. you got to live for God and you got to do things. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't be telling you this. Yeah. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't be pastoring today. I wouldn't be sharing my heart with you or, or telling you, you know, what, the importance of serving God. Why, what is a Christian? And getting all this information for you just to go in one ear and out the other so that you can live however you want to live. That's not why I do it. You with me? I am going to ask Andrea because I know one time she was getting earplugs at work. And I'm going to ask you to get me, or was it you? Somebody was getting me some earplugs for me, you know what I mean? And, 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 but I'm going to get a bunch and cut them in half. And, put, and, and when you come in, I'm going to put, you put one in one ear like that. You know what? <laughs> so, yeah, whatever comes in this ear is not going to go out this ear. It's going to have to stay in because of the earplug. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> It'll go in. We'll force it in. Somehow it's going to go in. This man made excuses. I bought property, and I need to go look at it. I need to go check it out. Amen? And, and I said, what kind of man would buy some property that hasn't seen it first? Send my regrets, he said. Was he really regretful? Was he, was he, was he, you know what I mean? It was just an excuse. He didn't want to go. Another said, I just bought five teams of ox, oxen, and I really need to check them out. Send my regrets. I just bought oxen. You with me? I bought oxen. I, I was thinking the other one maybe symbolize our homes, uh, where we live, uh, about a house, I bought, you know, whatever. You know, this one, I, I, I was thinking, trying to think, what is an oxen? Oxen symbolizes strength. An oxen can symbolize your provision. You with me? Because they use the oxen to plow their land so that they can plant and they can get a harvest and they can get money. So it could symbolize your job. You with me? The other one, I don't know, your home. Maybe you found this one, your job. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, your, your, your provision. And so how do I argue with somebody that says, I can't come to church on Sunday because I'm working. I can't argue with them. I can tell them what I believe. Yeah. They'll get mad at me if I do, because I'm just the preacher, right? right? I'm the one that God chose to put there to speak the words that people aren't going to want to hear. I can tell them, you know what? Why you work on Thursday evenings at 7? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You know that's church. That's right. 
Why would you make that arrangement and agree on something that you know that God requires you to be there so that you can learn, so that you can grow? And you got all these problems and you want Him to help you, but you don't want to obey and do what He tells you to do. All I can do is tell Him the truth. You with me? All I can do is say, well, I'm the, you know, God gave you six days to work, not five. So maybe you have Monday through Friday, and then there's Saturday, but then the Saturday Mexican dinner, and got out with it. Do all this. So no, actually, he gave you six days that you were to work. No weekends off, no Saturdays off. The way God said it's one through six, you work. Seven, he said, it's my day. Seven symbolizes your covenant. Remember Sunday we did the, the blood and the bread, the Passover, the communion? That was our covenant with God. You know what I mean? That's His covenant with us. You know what I mean? Our covenant towards God was that we'd be in church on Sunday. Yeah. And can I remind you this? If you look at it and study it yourself, it said all Sunday. Including Sunday morning and Sunday evening and even Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? Sunday afternoon was given to you so that you can go and relax, go eat with your family from 1 to 5. And then, and then again at 6 to come and hear more of the word. Why? Because you said you needed help. Right. You said you wanted wisdom. Right. But it's you. Amen. 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 Oxen, our jobs are, are all, the, I, I got to work. I cannot do what you asked me to do. Have me excused. In other words, it was my reason why I cannot obey the Lord. And look at the last one here. This is the funniest one to me. Let me see where I'm at. The first said, another, just bought five yoke of oxen. And yet another said, I just got married and I need to go to get home to my wife. Huh? I just got married and need to get home to my wife. What kind of excuse is that? Hmm? Amen. Amen. I can't do what God is asking me to do because the vieja is calling. And you know her. She's going to make my life a living hell if I choose God first. That's what this guy was saying. He said, you know what? I just got married so I can't go because my wife won't let me. Huh? Yeah. Have me excused. Send my regrets. I really would like to be there, but see what, what, what happened was, Amen. I like to be a part. I like to do what God, you know, I mean, I like to, you know, pastor says stuff that sounds so cool and I would like to, but I've got all these different excuses why I can't, why I can't do what God asked me to do. And you got to understand that when I got saved, I got, I had to change too. And, so, and you know, I think sometimes, you know, my wife tells me too, you know what I mean, sometimes you need to just be more patient with them, give them time. And that's when we're talking about the men though. You with me? And that, you know, uh, and then when we're talking about the women, she's the one, and I'm like, babe, come on now, be patient with them. You know, I mean, they've only been saved 15 years, and uh, and, and, and and we we try, you know, what I mean, but it's like, you know, it, it's hard when you got those of you that are here, and you got like a kid that is just won't do what you want him to do. They don't. I mean, they just give you the hardest time. You understand, you can kind of parallel that and say, that's that's what God's talking about. God's kids are doing what they want to do and, and, and they're making excuses for him. And, and, and you don't really tell him, you tell me. Yeah. It's easier to tell me or it's easier not to tell us. Yeah. We've gotten to the point to where we, you know, don't even say anything. We just do whatever we want to do and whatever the pastor says, I really don't care. You with me? And you gotta understand that the, that the that the pastor represents the Lord in your life. You with me? And the things that I tell you are not for my benefit. You with me? They're not for my advantage. They're not for me to be a <laughs> I've got them in control. You know what I mean? Like some warlock or something like that. I whatever I do is for your benefit and the benefit of the kingdom of God. Hmm? He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest to send forth workers. Yesterday the man asked us, he said, do you know how to spell ministry? 
And, and you know, he says, W-O-R-K. So don't send me in the ministry, Lord, because I don't want to work. Hmm? Amen? And, and, and he says, pray that God would send workers because the harvest is there. The harvest is there. It's all over Pueblo. He said, the workers, there's no workers. You with me? There's nobody that wants to commit. There's nobody that wants to, to obey. You know, and it's hard because, you know, you can, you can try and argue, well, I'll obey the Lord, but I don't have to listen to you. And, and that's kind of what we're learning, and that's kind of what I want to be teaching on in the armor bearer. You know what I mean? And to teach you how to, you know, why David was serving and, 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 and a, a king who was trying to kill him, why he was loving him and, and, and as his own soul and do all this, you know what I mean? And, 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 the, and why he was his armor bearer was because he loved, he loved Saul as his own heart. Jonathan loved David as his own soul. You with me? Joshua loved Moses. And we heard last night, he slept outside Moses' tent at his beck and call for 40 years, waiting to serve him, waiting to do this. You know why? Because they loved the Lord with all their heart, and, and they loved the man of God that God put in their lives. Amen. Hmm? Amen. They loved their pastors. They loved them with, with all their hearts, and, 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 and they, they served their church and their people, their, their, their brothers and sisters in Christ as if it was Jesus himself. Yeah. Isn't the Bible say something silly? It's like, do unto, like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or, 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 or you know what I mean? Right? Or am I, am I losing my mind? Yeah. Huh? Doesn't he say, do everything as unto the Lord? Yeah. And not unto man? Right. You with me? Well, I don't have to miss the hymn. Who is he? He's just a man. He said, do everything you do as unto the Lord, especially the things of God. Right. You with me? Right. At work. You know, and I teach you guys, and I tell you guys, you guys need to honor and respect your bosses at work. Right. You need to be the ones leading the example and being the person that the, the bosses so proud to have chosen you to work on their team, not the one that makes them hate you and makes them feel like, ugh, I can't stand them, and all that stuff. You shouldn't be that kind of person. And then say, oh, you know, I wonder if they come to our church. They're not going to come over here. Yeah. Why would they want to come to a church where they can't even get along with you at work? Yeah. More or less come over here and worship their free time with you side by side. But you know who will? Somebody who sees something different in you. Somebody who sees a, a servant of God in you. Somebody who sees a person that cares and loves and, and, and all this stuff. And they see you and they're like, man, where do you go to church at? I think I want to come by your church. Right. Why? Because of you. Because right. they see something inside of you. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. These individuals here were called to do what you're, what you're doing today, to serve God. To come into the kingdom of God and do all this stuff. But they preoccupied their time with every excuse in the book. And said, I can't do it, I can't do it, you know, I, I, uh, that doesn't even make sense. I'm going to go check some land out that I bought. I can't come to, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hmm? You know why? Because I don't think they understood. They, they thought it was phony. They thought it was fake. Think of for a moment the men, the people who, who Noah was preaching to, help me build this ark for God. It's going to rain, and God's going to flood the earth with water, and they never even knew what rain was before. It had never rained before. And he's telling them, help me build a boat. They didn't know what a boat was. And he's saying, for God is going to bring his judgment, and he's going to flood the land, and everybody who's out not in the boat will die and perish. And they drank, and they laughed at him. For what, how long? 120 years, I think, he yeah. built that thing? Yeah. But 120 years came, and he said, get in the boat, Noah. Get your family in the boat. You with me? It says he was a preacher of righteousness, telling them, get right or get left. You with me? Serve God. And you imagine how crazy that was, seeing some big old wood box. It wasn't no boat. It wasn't like the Titanic or even the nice wood boat that you see. It was a box that was made of wood that did not float. It was an unfloatable ship that floated. The Titanic was an unsinkable ship. 
that sank. The best quality that man can make sank. And something that man, you know what I mean? A, you know, a box with, with tar and with the heaviest wood, the, the unfloatable wood, and it floats. You with me? And, 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 and yet, you know what I mean? Noah would preach to them and tell them that Jesus is coming or, the, or, the, or the, it's going to rain and they didn't listen. And how many times have you heard me say, Jesus is coming soon? He's coming sooner than you think. He's right around the corner. Why do you think all these killings? Why do you think all this stuff is happening? <laughs> Satan knows his time is short. Amen. The only one that doesn't know that God is coming soon is us. Yeah. We're, we're, we're living in, in a fantasy. We're, we're so preoccupied in our minds with our lives yeah. and what we want and, and what's going on in our lives and all this. We're so preoccupied. We, we're not even paying attention to what's happening. You with me? Watch, let me show you God's response to these guys because God don't take an excuse very well. I just got married and I need to go home, to get home to my wife. Amen. The servant went back and he told the master what had happened. And I put this in parentheses. I put, he was, out, he was outraged and told this, the servant, quick, Get out into the city streets. Think about Pueblo. Quick, get out into the city streets and alleys. He says, Co collect all who look like they need a square meal. All the misfits, thank God for that one, and the homeless and the wretched, you can lay your hands on. He said, and bring them, bring them here. The servant responded back. He said, Master, he said, I did what you, what you commanded, and there's still room. The master said, uh, then go to the county lanes, go, or go to the county roads. He said, Where, whoever, you can whoever you can find, Drag them in. He didn't say, ask them. He said, drag them in. He said, I want my house to be full. I want my house full. Let me tell you, not one of those originally invited is going to get so much as a bite at my dinner, at my dinner party. How many think God was a little bit upset there? Yeah. He, he made an invitation. He invites you. And listen, and I'm talking, I'm talking not only to you, but to your families. Because see, you're the preachers in them places. Yeah. See, I don't know if you know this, but there's a New Hope Ministries over on Azalea Street. Sure. Yeah. And it's down on, what, 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 what street, brother? Amarillo and Forest Street. There's a New Hope Ministries right there. There's one over on 9th Street, I think. There's one right down here on 11th Street. There's one where you live, Vicky. There's there's one at Angela's house. There's one at Mary's. There's there's one at you know every one of you that you got a New Hope Ministries church there. It's called your house. Yeah. And your congregation is those within. Yeah. And those around. Them are like your neighbors. You know, sometimes we'll go out having flyers and our neighbors and giving them bread or different things like that. That's what you need to do at your church. Because you're the preachers, you're the pastors of those homes. You're the ones that bring them in like this, say, what do you mean you don't want to go to church? Get over here. We're going to church. We're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. You with me? He said, go out and get the homeless. Go out and find the, find the people in the alleyways. Find a drug addict. Whoever will come, bring them. Yeah. He said, I want my house full. Look at the empty seats tonight. Where's your... Where's the ones that you're compelling? That's what it means. Drag them in here. That means that's what compel means. If you don't believe me, look on your iPhone. You go to search divine uh, 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 compel, and it'll bring up the word compel. And what it means is make them come. Yeah. Hmm? Look for it yourself. Study it yourself, so you don't think I'm lying. It means make them come in. Drag them in. This is what this translation says. You with me? Drag them. He says, so my house would be filled. 
I know what I feel like when I walk in and I told you there's three or four people. And I know what I feel like when I walk into a full sanctuary and I'm like, you can feel the power of God. You ever heard that there's power in numbers? I know the two or three can agree in touching anything, and where two or three agree here, there he is in the middle. I know that. Praise God for that scripture, but it's already, you know, it's for it's not it's meaning that you have two or three in your church. You with me? He says, I want my house. Not Pastor Vince Diaz. God said, I want New Hope Ministries filled. We've got chairs in there we can bring out. We've got chairs back there we can bring out. I mean, we could standing room. We could put more folding chairs. We could fit 150 in this place. Easy. Amen. God said, I want my house filled. Right. You with me? He's tired of the excuses of, of his kids and his people who don't want to come to church. You with me? Amen. That breaks his heart. It really does. Let me finish up here. Sounds like this, this man, and I put in parentheses, God, was angry at those people who made excuses and like they and 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 like they they got nothing from God. Amen? Amen. These people not only they got God mad, but they got nothing from him. Look what Matthew chapter 20, Matthew says in Matthew 25, verse 10 through 12. You guys remember the story of the, of the, of the, the ten virgins? Yes. Five were wise, five were foolish. And I, I say to make it easy, call them the ten Christians. Because right. virgin doesn't, it doesn't mean that ten, ten chicks that, you know, didn't have sex and they're still pure. And what it means is Christians that are pure in their hearts. Yeah. He's telling a story here. You with me? He's not concerned with their sexuality per se. And that he's, he's showing that they're pure because they've accepted Jesus Christ. But five of them were not too wise. Five of them were foolish. Five were wise. You with me? They prepared. And the whole thing was the coming of the Lord. Yeah. That Jesus is coming soon. And we do not have time to pick and choose what we want at first. Right. Or what we want at New World Ministries. Right. Are you with me? We've got to get in and eat the spinach. Amen. You with me? And get a salad. Yeah. Remember first? You guys remember first? Yeah. Amen. I, I, towards the end there, you know what I mean? It was like, yeah, I guess I'd take a salad, I guess, you know? But before that, man, it was not like, you know, just, just go right. Salad's just a waste of space. You know, I mean, get down to this chicken fried steak. And, you with me? I mean, come on now. Right? And, and well, but we don't want the vegetables and we don't. We want, we want, where's the sweets, Brother Johnny? Where's the sweets, Pastor? We want that. We want, you know what I mean? We don't want water. We want soda. We want to pick and choose. And that, and that sometimes that's a way, that's the spirit that gets on us when we're serving God. So you've got no more ministries with all these things that they do and all this stuff. But I'm going to pick and, well, I, I like that, but I don't like that. So I'll show up here and if I have to, I'll go there and, you know what I mean? You can't do that. You with me? Yeah. Amen, Pastor. Some of you know better than that. Amen. Some of you know better than that. But sometimes we get into these bad habits of doing stuff or not doing stuff. Yeah. Remember, it's not just a committal of a sin. It's the omission of a sin, too. Or the omission of something. Not just committing something, but omitting, which means not doing what you know you should do. Right. As a matter of fact, I think that's the definition of sin. Yeah. To know to do good and not do it is sin. That's scripture right there. But this is what Matthew 25, 10 through 12 says. After the virgins, after they, remember he came, the bridegroom came and, 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 and they were sleeping. Verse, verse 10 says, but while they were, but while they were gone, remember the, 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 the foolish ones went to, they had to go buy their own oil for their, for their lamps. Because they weren't ready, church. They weren't ready, and this is what it says. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was locked. As a matter of fact, if you read about Noah's Ark, the Bible says the same thing. They went into the ark. And it wasn't Noah that shut the door. 
It said God shut the door. The door was shut. This one says the door was locked. Later, later, when the other five, the foolish ones, the bride, bridesmaids, they returned, and I put this in parentheses, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I do not know you. Amen? I do not know you. The door was shut. They could not get in. And the saddest part about eternity is that there's going to be, there's going to be people who do not make heaven their home. People who came to church occasionally. Amen. People who serve the Lord conveniently that will not make heaven their home. They will come. They will come as far as the doors, but the door is shut to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And, and, and I didn't find it in this, and maybe in Mark or in Luke or in, different, in the different Gospels, I was, I was looking for what it said because I remember him reading, uh, 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 the door was shut, uh, uh, get out into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Hmm? And that weeping and gnashing of teeth is grinding and it's a weeping, it's a heavy duty. You know what I mean? I, you, you didn't make it. You didn't get in, and there is no second chances. Right. You with me? I don't know where we got the, the, the idea that it's all right. If I don't make the first trip, I'll make the second. You know what I mean? That's not up to you. That's not your choice either. Yeah. You with me? When God shuts that door for you, it's shut. And there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity. You with me? Now, will that individual go to hell and burn in the flames forever? I, I don't know. Or will they just be outside in darkness where he said in, in various places that there's dogs and there's, 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 there's liars and there's thieves and all this out there in that outer darkness that are, that are grinding their teeth and weeping. I don't know what, you know what I mean, necessarily what that means, but I don't want to be there either to experience it, to come back and tell you what it's like. I just want to be inside. I want to be where God is. I want to be, you know what I mean? Amen. Where the Lord's presence and where, his, where He has prepared. And we say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom prepared for you. I don't want to experience anything else. I don't want to preach on anything else. I want to be in and I want you in too. Just like if it was your babies and you wouldn't want you. you how would you feel to go to heaven and your kids go to hell? I mean, you think you're going to spend there in eternity, uh, you know, just enjoying and, and laughing and all this, knowing that your children are in hell for eternity? Because maybe we were a little bit too soft. Maybe we didn't tell them enough. Maybe we didn't preach hard enough. You with me? Maybe you, come on. Huh? We don't want that. We don't want to experience that. We pray, God save our children. God save our families. And, and God save these homies. We don't want him dying. You with me? I don't want to see him die. I don't want to see these girls die. I don't want to see anybody die without Jesus in their life. You with me? And when it comes down to it, that's what it means. That he's prepared a place for us, but we're, we, come, we got into this habit, into this demonic bad habit, to where, we're, where we excuse stuff, and where we accept stuff, and we feel like we can pick and choose, and it's not that way, you can't do that. If it was, you know what I mean? There's been many preachers that have found the little loopholes, you know what I mean? That you can just get around and, and, and cut corners. And I'm not that kind of person. I don't want to cut corners. I don't want to find loopholes. I want to do what God wants me to do all the way. I don't want to find tricks. And, you know, have you ever heard contractors or different people like that? Or, well, you know, we can do this or we can do that. Or we, we'll get cheaper wood or we'll do this and we'll do that. You know what I mean? Just to cut corners and save themselves money and stuff. You with me? And, and, and instead of doing something right, and then having to go back and redo it because you did it wrong in the first place. Right. I don't want to have to do that. I don't, I'm not a preacher like that. I would rather tell you something straight out and you either reject it or do it right and it gets done or it doesn't get done. That's it. Yeah. 
not beating around the bush, not candy, you know, coding anything, not, you know, this is the way, because that's the way I would raise my kids. That's the way we, I always was, you know what I mean? I don't want to be like that, and I'm not going to tell my church, you know what I mean, it's all right to do this, and it's not all right to, you know what I mean? I want to tell you the truth, and I want to tell you what God's Word says. And God, one of the things I know that He said is He's coming soon. And are you ready for the coming of the Lord? You with me? He's coming soon, and, 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 we, and, and how we get ready, how we buy our oil and, and, and keep our oil full is serving Jesus, prayer, reading our words, going to church, paying our tithes, and doing the simple, principal things, basic things you know to do, and then some. Then whatever He called you to do, then whatever you can find your hand to do, do it with all your heart. Serve God. Reach souls. Pray for people. Do great things for God. That's it. There's no other way. There's no other way. You with me? There's no other way. Stand with me tonight. How would you say excuses in Spanish? How? Anybody? Excuses? That's the bathroom, man. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the way you say the bathroom? Excusal. 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 No more excuses. You know, there's there's a there's a verse I didn't read. It's found in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. And if you read Romans 1, you're going to see in there talking about the end, the, the people in our world that are living crazy. I mean, homosexuality and all this different stuff. It explains it in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, where men are with men and giving themselves sexually and women with women and different stuff. And it, bring, it breaks everything down. It even comes down to even like the end times. Men will be lovers of themselves. Different stuff it says in there. But it said in Romans 1.20 that they're, that they're uh, uh, in the end, everybody that you know, all your family, all your loved ones, he said that, that hasn't accepted Jesus, they will be judged on the basis that, that, you know, that, that, that there will be no more excuse, that they cannot say, well, I'm an agnostic, I'm an, I'm an unbeliever, I'm a, I'm a, what do you call, not an atheist. Uh, I don't believe in a God and all this different. There is not going to be no excuses because he said all you have to do is look into creation and you can see in yourself as awesome and we're fearfully and wonderfully made in our bodies. You with me? In creation, in, the, in the, the mountains, in the sky, in the air we breathe and all that stuff. He said just seeing that, he said and not honoring God for who he is. He said there, we, there remains no more excuse for these people. So if people that you know and love think that they're just going to skate into heaven or, or, or whatever it is that they can just do and that it's going to be all right. Listen, if it's hard on us and we're serving God, you with me? He, if he said, you know, there's a scripture, I can't remember, but it said if we're scarcely being saved and we're serving God with all our hearts, what remains for them? That they just live their lives and, you know, oh, I don't believe all that. You know, dream, shoot, you know, do all this. He said, what judgment? Remain? There remains no more excuse. Read it for yourself in Romans 120. No excuses. You with me? And that was part of the, the translation in the Greek that they're trying to justify themselves of their guilt and different stuff like that. But they know they're wrong. And you with me? And, and ours is excuse. Not that we're guilty for doing things, it's guilty that we're not doing things we know we should be doing. Amen? And so, amen? There's your spinach. There's your comida for the night. Amen? Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you.